In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And greetings, everyone. Today we celebrate the richness of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in our lives, and the Spirit that descended on the disciples that led to the movement of the church. And so with great joy we celebrate this, and as we enter into our celebration, let us pause now just for a moment and ask the Lord to forgive our sins and to renew our hearts. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parsians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Polymia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Croatians and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord.
The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we are given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. Come, O Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, O Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within us shine. You are comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In a Yes. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On that evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, wherever you may be, and I hope things are going well for you. Today, we're celebrating the Spirit itself. The spirit that keeps us alive, that keeps us going, that builds confidence, that gives us hope and gives us strength. That was the spirit that was described in today's gospel. Here we have a community locked in the doors, locked behind their shutters, afraid of the crowds and the mobs that were out there. And they probably had a very good reason to be afraid because the mobs regarded them as blasphemous and as evildoers. So they had a lot to be afraid of. But yet there's something about that spirit that gave them the confidence to be able to do what they were able to do. They were able to walk out that door one step at a time. They were able to proclaim the truth and the hope that the gospel represented. And they were able to transform a world. That's the power of the spirit. That's the power of what we're celebrating today. And that is the power of the spirit also in our community as well. Ever since the beginning of Easter, we have seen that spirit work in so many ways, in the kindness and the love of strangers, people caring for each other, people reaching out, people sharing the gospel in the way that they behaved with one another, being alive with each other, not just reading the gospel, not just talking about it, but we've been living it, and we've been forced to live it. And this reality has really allowed us to ask the questions What are the true values in life that are most important to us right now? That's the working of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're seeing. And that's what we're all about. This weekend, when the church in this diocese slowly begins its reopening process, it's the perfect time to celebrate the Holy Spirit. We couldn't have asked for a better weekend to do this, no matter how hot it is outside. But it is a call. It is the Spirit inviting us one step at a time to move into this brave new world that we're having to deal with and trusting that the Holy Spirit is walking with us and guiding us through all of this. It's going to allow us to reconnect with our world in a new way, not the same way it was. Do we really want to go back to the same way it was? But the Spirit is inviting us to connect with each other in a new way, to proclaim the gospel perhaps in a new way, to be a witness to God's love in a new way. Sometimes change is hard. We don't like change. We're very comfortable with that. But the Spirit always invites us to change. It always encourages us to move to the next step, sometimes screaming and hollering, sometimes in great celebration. I'm sure when the disciples were touched with that Spirit, they were not quite sure who they were going to encounter when they walked out that door. Friend, foe, danger, hope. They had many questions, but they allowed that spirit to guide them. And they were able to make the decisions that helped to build the church that we know today. That's how the spirit works. It doesn't invite us to be irresponsible or crazy or fall off our chairs. The spirit is something that's very quiet in our hearts. It's the spirit that informs us that lets us be settled inside, that allows us to make those decisions in life that are truly fruitful, that are truly hopeful, and that are truly spiritual in nature. That's what we celebrate this day. We have many symbols of the spirit, the flames, the the tongues of fire, many things. But ultimately, it was about an awakening, a new realization, a new reality that a new world was emerging. 
and that these disciples helped us to walk through that transition, just as we're going through transition today. That's what the Spirit does. The Spirit always invites us to go to another stage. It never lets us sit on our laurels for long, no matter how much we want to stay there. It always invites us to do something new and to be new witnesses to Christ's love in the world. Sometimes it's very complicated things we're invited to do. Sometimes it's just a very simple thing. Something as simple maybe as a mask. Who knows? But that's how the Spirit moves. And that's the reason we're celebrating that this day. So as we continue our celebration, we need to give thanks to the Spirit in our lives. We must trust the word of that Spirit in our hearts. We must listen to it carefully. Let it open our minds and our hearts because it's the one voice we really can trust. Listen to it. Let that Spirit guide you and let that Spirit invite you into the next stage of life. Let us continue our prayer. Let us now pray on the last day of the 55 festival days of Easter, knowing that the Spirit intercedes for all saints. That the church may gather again in unity in spite of challenges and fear to proclaim the goodness of people of every race, language, and way of life. We pray to the Lord. That the Spirit may bestow on old and young alike dreams of peace and visions of justice. We pray to the Lord. That God's Spirit may breathe new life of hope into those deprived of their freedom, of food or of their human dignity. We pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit will continue to strengthen our frontline warriors against this COVID virus. That they may persevere with our support of love and, and prayers. We pray to the Lord. That those families suffering from the loss of a loved one to the pandemic, that they may feel God's spirit of compassion and love at this time of love and, of loss and fear, we pray to the Lord. We'd now like to take a moment during which we invite every one of you at the same time to say aloud the names of those persons you would like to remember in prayer. For all of these people, we pray to the Lord. For those in our book of life, the children listed in our book of innocence, for those who died this past week, and especially for Martha Reiner, and the intentions of our parish family and those who are suffering this season, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions on our wailing wall, those remembered on our wall of remembrance at the labyrinth, and for all of the spiritual and material needs of our parish community and its members, along with all those prayers, that are in the deep recesses of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. As we slowly reunite, we are reminded of the, power, of the power of the Holy Spirit that reunited a fearful community in Jerusalem. Empowered by the, the, that Spirit, they went forth and proclaimed the good news of God's love. May that same Holy Spirit inspire and embolden us with our challenges. To be true witnesses to God's love through all we say and do. He asks this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a perfect offering may be made to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. join together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now turn to each other in your homes and with your loved ones and offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
And let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements for you. First of all, this Mass will be posted around 4 o'clock on Saturday. And again, for those of you who will not be attending our, our newly started Masses outside in the back of the church, we offer this Mass for you to watch. And if you would like to receive communion, again, we will be offering it between about 9 in the morning to about 11 uh, on Sunday morning. So watch this Mass, celebrate this Mass with me, and then come out and receive communion if you feel comfortable, uh, starting at 9 o'clock. For those of you who are planning to go to, to our celebrations, it's going to be warm, as we all know. Make sure you bring a hat, bring something comfortable, and wear light clothes. Water, we, may, uh, we will also try to provide some as well for those who might need some. And hopefully you can join us. If you have registered, then please join us. But do not come over unless you have uh, made a reservation to come forward. This is for your safety and for the safety of everyone. When you do, if you do come for communion, make sure you wear a mask. We will be waiting for you and ready to celebrate the sacrament with you when you arrive. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.